Hey guys, welcome back. Um, some of you uh, are interested in, in finding out how we did the impossible induction. How did we make it work? Um, it's there's a trick to it, and uh, there's a, a, a few benefits also uh, in in the lateral induction versus the normal way. This is the the real model that that I used. <clears throat> so. Anyway, normally you have your rotor spinning with the magnets, okay? Normally it's this way. And you point your core right at the spinning magnets, right at it. Okay, it works perfectly good. But what happens is when you put a, a large load onto your production coil, it produces a large electromagnetic force, a lens force. So now here you are trying to spin your rotor with magnets, and here you are breaking it. You're producing a break, a, a magnetic break on your rotor that you're trying to spin. So guess what? The motor that's spinning your rotor now starts drawing more amps. So it's a lose-lose situation. All right, so now let's put it a different way. Let's, let's go laterally. Now right, so you've got your rotor spinning. So now instead of pointing your gun at the spinning magnets, you're, you're not sacrificing your spin because now you're doing it laterally. So, so here you are spinning your rotors. And yes, this does create lens, but lens is gonna come out each side. It's concentrated here and over here. And since the position is this way, since the position is this way, it does not affect the rotor spin. Whereas when you were doing it this way, it's a braking mechanism. Every time it's a braking mechanism. And depending on your load, if it's a large load, that means it's pulling a lot of amps through your coil. It's going to break your rotor quite a bit. Right? So this is not good for... Uh, <laughs> self-running generator not, not good braking effect but if you put it this way you still get the benefits of induction and like i said there is a trick to it and uh, that's coming up next thank you okay one of the things that you, we kind of need to get away from a little bit is it, this is not an electrical situation when you're working with magnetism electricity is has its own rules and magnetism, similar rules, but uh, quite a bit different. For example, a battery is a dipole. And in order to get work out of it, you know, you need your uh, copper wiring so you can lead that, that uh, dipole to the motor or the light bulb or whatever you want to work. Eventually, you will kill that dipole. It will go to zero. Um, Magnetism, magnetism wants to kill itself too. It wants to go from the North Pole, South Pole, and wants to do this. As you see in the picture there, it wants to go travel from pole to pole. It can't do that very well with the air. Air is not a good conductor. So magnetism is constantly looking Looking to find a good conductor. And here you go. All you need is a piece of iron, and that magnetism will jump to it so that it can complete its path. The, uh, the path of self destruction. It wants to go from north to south, south to north. It wants to kind of, uh, you have inertias that are spinning opposite, it, it attracts. And wants to cancel each other out. That's what magnet. That's what drives magnetism. It wants to cancel each other out. So, what you do is you put a little trap. You say, "Okay, I'll let you get together, but you have to go out this route." And when you go this route, it's a piece of iron with wire wrapped around it. I'll let you go through through the uh, the conduit here, the the steel. Uh, or ferrite, I'll let you do that, Mr. Magnetism. 
but you need to do some work for me. And that's what you do. You make it work for you. You make the magnetism work for you, going through your <coughs> coil, producing electricity. So you have to trick magnetism to do what you want it to do. It wants to cancel each other out, but you're going to put it to work. You're going to let it do that, but you're going to put it to work. Okay? So <coughs> when you put a piece of metal, iron, it should be roughly the same length as your as your coil and in addition on your rotor let's say let's say that you have two inches between each magnet so that means that the north and the south pole is going to try to bridge over that two inches but it's air remember it's air and here you come here you come along you put this two inch piece of iron inside this coil when the rotor comes to the right right point that magnetism that i was saying is going to jump into this it wants to jump because you're providing a shortcut it's not going through air anymore it wants to go through iron it prefers iron how much so well it prefers iron anywhere between five thousand to six thousand to one that's the ratio. Prefers iron to air. So, so whenever you iron a piece of iron comes close to those magnets, the magnets take advantage of it and jump right into it. That's how it works. So anyway, <clears throat> you have your spinning magnets two inches apart, and then you bring this close to it. It's gonna use your metal piece to complete its cycle to bridge it so here comes the two magnets north and south and when it gets to this point it bridges over so that that flux of, of, of magnetism that just made the bridge produces your electrical current inside your coil so that's how it works and I'm going to put a little schematic there so that it helps you kind of visualize what I'm talking about okay all right thank you